My son Gregory is diagnosed with autism. He's seven years old. However, we started dealing with issues with him from when he was 18 months old and originally diagnosed with apraxia of speech, and it just went from there. Seemed like every time we got a new diagnosis, another one would come. My child was not speaking. We were told he was never going to speak. Everything was dire. And um, I've always been a big public school advocate, so I went ahead and made a really strong IEP with our school district and felt very confident about it. And then after a week in kindergarten, everything fell apart. And his enthusiasm and my enthusiasm um, was dying. He, uh, this public school, it's not their fault. They didn't know what to do with him. He wasn't ready for a mainstream classroom. He wasn't quite high enough to be in a special education classroom. He needed so much help. And I just saw it all fading. And I saw, um, I mean, my hope was just going. It was gone. My husband and I were just despondent. And after two weeks, we went ahead and pulled him. Um, and I didn't know what we were going to do. And in the meantime, we moved up to Tallahassee. And I found this small private school that specialized in children with different learning challenges. And um, had Gregory tested. and. Um, if you want to pull up the slide, I brought up the, uh, the entry level when we went on April the 14th. Um, you can see the severe dyslexia. He, this was by dictation and asking him to write the alphabet. He was six years old. So if you're looking at proficiencies and you know proficiencies, you know that's ridiculous. Um, but my baby couldn't do it. And so... We went through the testing, and um, they said, we can help your child. And they gave me the cost. It was going to be $28,000 a year and with all the tutoring. And I, we don't have that kind of money. Um, but I signed them up, and I said, well, we can afford one semester. So we pulled money out of our IRA at a penalty, and we paid for the first semester. And I thought, well, anything's better than nothing. And so then that October, I found out about Florida's PLSA program, Personal Learning Scholarship. And um, let, me, equal, let, me, sure. let me interrupt for a second. Just how did you find out about it? I mean, our that's principal, one of our challenges is it's a lot funny. of people don't it, know. It was kind of a new, it's, it was very new. So she said, I just got this email about this new program that might work for you guys. Because in Florida, we also have the McKay Scholarship which is great for kids who have been in public school for a certain amount of time. I couldn't keep my child in public school for two weeks. I couldn't get past, I wasn't going to be able to get a McKay scholarship or apply for it. So this worked for us. Um, she goes, give, it, give him a call and see what this is about. And I did. And um, uh, it's a call that changed my life and um, changed my child's life. If you look at the dates on, my, uh, on his work, that's from... April the 29th, 2014, to um, last March. He did all that via dictation. The teacher read the sentence, and he wrote it. And, um, you know, you might be looking at it and just thinking, uh, well, it looks like a kindergarten first grader's handwriting, but my child wasn't going to be able to write if we stayed in public school. I had already been told he wasn't going to be able to speak. So... For me, having him in the right environment now, he's in a, the right environment, I really feel strongly that within five years, we might be able to be back in public school in a mainstream classroom, whereas that never would have happened before. And I come here to speak to legislators and to school districts and whatnot and say, I'm not a threat. My child is not a threat to public school. I love public school. I want my child to be in public school, but right now it just doesn't fit him personally. And it's not your fault. It's my, my child is unique. So I'm not a threat. I just need to get my child the help he needs now so that hopefully, because my husband and I have hope now. I, I, we were talking about long-term care and how we should think about who he's going to live with when we go. And I mean, it was awful. And I... I think he'll be able to live independently now. I mean, he can, he has a friend, and I always give the story that he had his birthday party at a bowling alley this year. That is huge for us. He has friends. He had a birthday party. Like, that is, we're going to make it. <laughs> so.